Hi everyone, I'm Shelly Ann Stewart and this is Denise Salonas. And today we are here at the Loma Linda Anatomy Lab where we will take you on a tour of the celiac trunk. Celiac trunk or truncus celiacus as is named in Latin, it is a very important structure of the abdominal aorta. This structure supplies very important organs of our bodies such as stomach, duodenum, pancreas, gallbladder and liver. So now let's take a tour over to the cadaver. And now let's go and take a look at the celiac trunk. And we are hoping that by the end of this lecture, the students will be able to know and identify the important branches as well as their distribution. As we were uh, mentioning before, the celiac trunk, it is a very short branch that, um, that comes off the abdominal aorta. It arises from the anterior surface immediately below the abdominal hiatus of the diaphragm and gives rise to three very important branches named such as left gastric artery, splenic artery, which is going to supply our spleen, and the common hepatic artery. Those three branches are very important from a clinical point of view because they supply vital organs within the abdominal area. We will begin with the smallest branch of the celiac trunk, which is the left gastric artery or the arteria gastrica sinistra. The left gastric artery ascends slightly until it reaches the lesser curvature of the stomach and then it descends within the lesser omentum. It gives off to several small branches which supplies the both surfaces of the stomach. At the midpoint of the stomach, it anastomoses with the right gastric artery. Also, the left gastric artery gives off small branches that supply the abdominal esophagus or the abdominal part of the esophagus. Those branches are known as the esophageal branches of the left gastric artery. Some of those branches continue through the esophageal hiatus of the diaphragm and they are going to anastomose with the esophageal branches of the thoracic cavity. And next, Shelley will introduce you to the splenic artery or arteria splenica. Now let's take a look at the second branch of the celiac trunk. This branch is the splenic artery. The splenic artery starts at the bifurcation of the celiac trunk and it runs to the left where it goes and supplies the spleen. It also gives off a branch called the short arteries that supply the fundus of the stomach as well as the upper aspect of the stomach. It also gives off another branch called the left omental artery. And this artery supplies half of the greater curvature of the stomach and it also anastomoses with the right omental artery, which is a branch of the gastroduodenal artery, which we'll see in a minute. And now let's take a look at the final and last branch of the celiac trunk. This branch is the common hepatic artery. This artery runs to the left and it bifurcates into the hepatic artery proper and the gastroduodenal artery. The hepatic artery proper also gives rise to a small artery called the right gastric artery, which anastomoses with the left gastric artery to supply the lesser curvature of the stomach. While the gastroduodenal artery uh, runs posteriorly and it runs posteriorly into the abdominal cavity where it bifurcates into an anterior and posterior superior pancreatico duodenal artery that supplies the duodenum as well as the head of the pancreas. It also gives rise to a branch called the right omental artery. The right omental artery, as you can see here, anastomose with the left omental artery, which is a branch of the splenic artery. Together, these two arteries supplies the greater curvature of the stomach. And lastly, uh, is the right 
gastric artery. So as you can see, all these branches of the celiac trunk and the celiac trunk itself actually supplies oxygenated blood to the organs in the foregut, namely the liver, the stomach, the spleen, the pancreas, and the duodenum. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy our video. <laughs>